All right, I'm excited about our next presenter. She's presented for us before, and she's been on our Early Childhood Podcast. Dr. McKay has been in the field of early childhood education for 40 years. She currently serves as a third grade teacher and adjunct faculty. Dr. McKay also operates her own training and consulting business. Her accomplishments include her recently published book, Effective Family Engagement Policies, a guide for administrators, and then also an article for Exchange Magazine titled A Case for Comprehensive System for Family Engagement. Congratulations on those. In 2019, Dr. McKay was selected as an emerging leader in the early childhood by Exchange Mag Magazine. And then she was also honored for presenting at the NAEYC Leadership Conference, as well as many other state and local conferences and workshops. Dr. McKay, we know you're amazing. That's why you're here. Thanks. Next slide, please. So before we get to Dr. McKay's session, we just want to kindly request your attention for a brief moment. In the spirit of transparency and respect for our community, we have some information we'd like you to read in the on-screen disclaimer. By taking a few moments to read through the disclaimer, you empower yourself with pertinent information regarding the boundaries of our knowledge sharing environments. Next slide, please. Take a moment to read through this slide also. Then together we will embark upon this exciting session while we push boundaries and leave an indelible mark on the ever evolving landscape of early childhood education knowledge. Dr. McKay, our colleague, our friend, the floor is yours. All right, so thank you very much for having me again. Um, it's an exciting thing to be able to present at this conference and um, just share some information and experiences that I have um, in my many, many years. So this is um, what I call the ECE Administer Administrator Survival Kit, sorry, um, where we are just not in that mode of surviving, but we can move into thriving. Um, it is so important for us to understand that we can do that. Uh, however, it feels like we are always in survival mode, right? Um, so they have already uh, gone over my introduction, but I did want to share that I know a thing or two about being burned out, about wanting to give up, about always being in that survival mode and moving forward into getting into um, thriving mode. So of course the theme that I have selected for this is survivor. Um, and we're gonna talk about how we can outwit, outplay and outlast um, sometimes ourselves as administrators in order to get to that thriving um, piece that we want to get to. So if we were in person, I would have a nice paper plate in front of you with some crayons or some markers. And I would ask you to divide that plate up and really talk about what does your typical day look like? you know, taking into account everything that you do, including your sleep, your meals, um, leisure time, if you have time for that, which you should be making time for that. So you would divide your plate into pieces and the sizes then are going to be determined on how many hours a day you spend on those particular activities. It's a great way to visualize um, how your day is spent. And we're gonna talk a little bit about time um, a little bit further into the presentation. But the important piece is to understand where our time goes. What do we devote the most time to? Um, do we need to look at this and rearrange some of our time? Um, what is the biggest piece of pie on our plate? and do we need to um, make some adjustments there? So that's what we're gonna kind of be looking at as we go through each one of these topics. If I were teaching third grade right now, we would talk a lot about fractions, um, about dividing the pie, but that is not what we are gonna do today. Um, 
that I am busy getting into uh, third grade mode. So we look at this plate that we have just drawn and we see all of the things that take up our time and we're in help mode, right? Um, I was, this is an old commercial. So if any of you are old schoolers like me, y'all remember the Calgon take me away uh, commercials because everyday stress just builds up and we get to that point where we want to be um, in the bathtub, soaking in the bubble bath or whatever it is that you like to do to um, get away from it all. So the, the whole purpose of Survivor, right, is to see who of these teams can outwit, outplay, and outlast. Um, if for some reason you don't make it, then your torch gets snuffed and you go, right? Well, that's not what we want to have happen. We want to make sure that our torches stay lit um, and that we have enough gas or whatever it is, oil that we want to put in those torches to continue to do what we do. So we need to outwit, we need to handle what life or work throws on my plate before that torch goes out. So in this first section, we're going to talk about um, our vision. Um, this is all about outwitting our time, our goals, and our personal competence and then be able to do some of these things that we need to do. So I have this listed as becoming a visionary, but really, um, I think I would like to change this to becoming a, a good player or a team, uh, team leader or just a teammate. Um, because, or even a strategist, right? Um, I want to develop the strategies that I need to make sure I can handle what's on my plate. So the first thing that you need to have is, um, if you can't tell what these are, these are night vision goggles. Um, so we have to have vision. Um, so the very first thing that you want to put in your little toolkit is some supervision glasses, things that you are able to um, sit back, look at, and determine where are you on this journey. Um, what does it mean to have a vision? The definition of vision is the faculty of sight, something that is or has been seen, the manner in which one sees or conceives something, but also a mental image produced by the imagination. So if you had on these supervision glasses and you know what's on your plate, how can you really kind of produce a mental image to say, okay, what do I need to do to start reducing some of these things on my plate? And we're looking at the full plate, not just your job plate, but the whole thing, because it's all related, right? If we don't have enough time for ourselves, if we don't have enough time for our family, then our torch is going to burn out. So it's important to know where you're going. So you have to have a vision because if you don't know where you're going, it's going to be very hard to tell when you've gotten there. Because when we stay in this mode, it's always, oh, I got to here, but I need to be here. I got here and I, and I need to be here. We need to have the forethought to be able to go into and beyond the, the next goal. So where do we need to go? What is the end goal? Well, the end goal is to make sure all of those pieces of our plate are equally or not, maybe not equally, but fairly or equitably um, divided up so that our day does not make us feel like we need to take that Calgon bubble bath. So let's take a look at time. We talked about time and we, you know, if you do the paper plate thing, uh, time is very important. So, um, you know, some people like to get full eight hours of sleep, but if you are taking work home or you're trying to squeeze in your family time, you may not get that eight hours of sleep. How does not getting that eight hours of sleep affect your day and the rest of the things on your plate? So it's very important for us to know 
um, you know, adding a, an hourglass of time. If you were in person, and I'm sorry that you're not in person because I love to actually give these pieces for you to plop into a little kit um, so that you could take them home with you because they're great reminders. Um, but time is so very important. There are only 24 hours in a day. So when you divide that plate up, you have to take that into consideration. So do your math when you make those plate uh, you know, divisions and say, mm, wait, I, that's more than 24 hours. So we have to realize that. We only have seven days in a week, 168 hours total. We don't have the luxury of being able to change how much time we have. If we're lucky, we get that extra leap day. Um, and I think this is actually leap year. So um, coming up 2024. So we will have an extra day. So here's what I do. I try to take leap day unless I'm working and just make that my fun day, not my only fun day, but a fun day because it's an extra day, right? Um, so if you think of it that way and you use your supervision goggles, you can maybe make that work for you. Um, back in the day, I used to love to watch Days of Our Lives, and it's really true. Um, like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. And we have to be in charge of that hourglass and those sand pieces dropping um, and understanding that we only have so much time during the day. So we have to realize that time management, which is a buzzword for everybody in admin, right? Um, and even, you know, people who aren't in admin, time management, time management, time management. It doesn't really exist, my friends. Time management is a misnomer because you can't manage time. It just is. We have what I just showed you on the prior slide. We have 24 hours a day, so many minutes per hour, et cetera, et cetera. That's all we have. We can't create time. We can't take away time. It is what it is. It's stagnant. So we have to understand that we have to use a different approach because if we try to keep managing our time, then it's going to, we're going to run in circles. So that's important to understand. So what we really need to do is manage the activities that we do during specific time periods. So, okay, I have the hours between 7.30 and 3.30 at school. That's when I need to get my stuff done. At I'm a teacher, I totally understand, but Dr. McKay, we, did, we have to do this and then we get pulled into meetings and blah, blah, blah but I try to be very respectful of that time. I try to use my planning time as wisely as possible. Um, the time after the children leave my classroom as wise as possible. Um, and yes, I may come a little early, but I'm very, very, very um, stingy with my time. Um, of course, because I'm a teacher that likes to go above and beyond, um, I'm going to put a little extra time in, but I'm going to manage what I do in that time to make sure that I'm not burning myself out, that it's not over um, messing with my schedule or, or my other time that I have allotted for other people. Um, so that is very, very important. And then it is defining outcomes and phys the physical actions that are required to make that happen. I need to manage what I do and what I don't do, not my time. And so be protective of your time for yourself, for your family, and for the betterment of um, your practices. Because if you don't, and you're always in this survival mode, you're not going to give the appropriate attention to the things that you have to do, the things that you need to do. And so you're not going to be good to anybody if we don't stop, stop saying manage time, but rather manage what we do in our time. So what are some of the things that are the top uh, time wasters? Um, crises. Now you can't say, you know, and you're going to say, Dr. McKay, um, I have to handle crises. Well, Think about how crises happen. Um, who else on your team is available to help you manage crises? You don't have to be the chief fire putter outer. 
you can delegate and you can create yourself a team to keep that managed. Same thing with telephone calls. Um, yes, parents are very demanding of our time. Um, we get that. We want to make sure we're doing that. But we also spend a lot of time wasting time on the phone. Again, can we delegate? Can we have a team that helps with that for planning? Um, and we're going to talk about planning a little bit later. Planning is so very important. If Again, take those things on your plate. Plan them out based on the time you want to give to them and work backwards, okay? Attempting to do too much. I don't know about you guys, but I do it all the time. Learning how to say no, and that's one of the ones at the bottom, the inability to say no. And I have been there a lot. Um, people, I'm, a, I'm one of those people, and I think we are in the field just we're automatically nurturers. And so we want to help people. We want to help and, you know, oh yeah, I'd be happy to do that. We have to learn how to say no, because if it's not allotted in the time that I have set aside for this, then I can't do it. Um, if it's going to take time away from something else that I have planned, because I'm a planner, then I can't do it. Um, drop-ins, I know there's a, not a lot you can do about that to make it stop, but the thing is, is again, do you have somebody in place that could take that off your plate, that has a little room on their plate that they can do that? Um, so here we go, poor delegation. It's all about delegating. There are things that you do not have to do. Now, if you are a control freak like me, and I fully admit that, um, I should probably go to Control Freak Anonymous, um, but that is a huge thing for me. I need to learn how to delegate more, and I am. So it is a process. It's not something you're gonna go, oh, okay, she said to do all this stuff and it's gonna happen overnight. It's not. Personal disorganization. If you are not organized friends, and I know not everybody is an organi organization freak either, but if you're not semi-organized at least, um, you, you waste so much time trying to find that piece of paper that you were looking for. Um, you know, kind of follow that rule that you only touch a piece of paper once and it goes wherever it is it needs to go. If that's in the trash can, that's where it goes. Um, you know, think about how you can set yourself up for success rather than for defeat. Self-discipline goes right along with that. And of course, procrastination. So it just doesn't exist. So we have to figure out how am I going to handle? These are some of the things that are on that work section of your plate. So then your next kid item is going to be um, some crayons because who doesn't love to draw? And really what you need to do is look at your personal goals, your visions, your dreams, the things that you can do to take some of those items off of your plate. What, just look into, in, into um, some things that you, that you think about, some of the things that probably um, take up time or maybe you don't have time for, but what do you want people to see about your program? Do you want people to see you rushing around like a chicken with your head cut off? Or do you want to, them to walk into a program where things are calm, um, crises are not happening every five seconds, and you have the ability to do what it is that you need to do? You will have the time and attention to devote to all the things that are on your plate. And believe it or not, when people walk in your program, they can see these things. Um, why are you involved in this field to begin with? Again, if you don't know where you're going or why you're here, it's going to be very hard for you to get out of survival mode. Um, if you are continuous, continuously asking yourself why you're here, then you may want to reassess why you are here. Um, and what is it that's you know, what can I do to make this not a question, um, but rather a bold statement? And what are your goals? Where do you want to go? What do you want to see happen? How do you look at that plate? And I encourage you all to do this on your own um, after the conference is over, because um, you will have access to these to these videos. But take that plate and look at it again and start writing some goals for yourself. How can I decrease what's on my plate, manage it better, not the time, but the stuff, and 
How, what's this going to look like when I get there? And then what are your dreams? Um, in a perfect world, what would you like to see? Leave a place uh, or a piece on your pie plate for dreams, for hopes and dreams. Because if we don't, again, we become very stagnant and we don't want, and we become bitter. Um, so what are your dreams for you, for your program, for your family, all of those things? Again, think about your perfect world, your perfect situation and what you would do with that. And then we need to get smart or smarties. Um, and, and to do so, to in order to really become a thriver rather than a survivor, we need to educate ourselves. We need to build a, a mini toolkit, a toolkit within a toolkit of items that we can depend on, our go-to. Um, and these are just some examples of some that I have in my toolkit already. Um, and some organizations that are there um, involving yourself in conferences, going to conferences like this and getting those um, pieces of information that you can take back. Um, you know, every workshop that you attend for this conference, look at your plate and go, okay, this applies to this portion of my plate and I can figure out how to move on from here using the, the materials and the information that I received today. So keep yourself um, on target, keep yourself on top of things, um, read continuously. And I know, again, it's difficult to find the time to read, but if you sliver yourself out a small piece of your plate for, I have to do this myself for um, professional reading, and then I have a sliver for personal reading so that, again, I'm not spending all of my time doing professional work, but it's evenly distributed or equitably distributed. So I can read for fun, and then I know I have this time where I've set aside to review some of my professional um, development toolkit items that I have and I haven't read yet. So that's on my plate, um, my rearranged plate, I should say. All right, so we've made it this far and we haven't had our torch put out yet, okay? So now we're going to go into the outplay. Um, before we were talking about strategies to outwit other people and it's not a competition, it's really not. We don't wanna, you know, knock anybody off the island or whatever, um, wherever we are. But, you know, in this game that we play with ourselves, and that's really what this is all about, is, is how we are doing this with our own selves, um, we need to be able to have some strategies to maneuver some of these things that we um, are going through. So what do you already have to empty or at least reduce what is on your plate. So what skills do you already possess? Um, maybe you possess them, but they need to be refined a little bit. Um, what are the resources that you currently have? Um, those types of things. So I can control my own attitude, right? I can um, seek out guidance. I can find a mentor. Um, I probably already have a mentor or somebody who's walked this path and can guide me, or I can use some of that stuff that I gathered in my Smarties phase and um, use it to guide what I do. Um, I need to understand perceptions because we are in a field where we deal with people all the time and we need to understand um, how people view us. And then of course, communication is huge. So um, we need to learn how to work smarter, not harder. And that's what this is all about. I can outplay by working smarter and not harder. So the next item I would wanna put in there is a smiley face. Um, this is my attitude that I wanna have all the time. Um, and I should have this attitude you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I really need to be happy. If I'm not, then um, I'm probably still stuck in survivor mode and I don't want to be there. So if you are familiar from, uh, I think back early 90s, I believe, or mid 90s, um, the fish philosophy. Um, and one of their philosophy pieces was choosing your attitude. 
If you're not familiar with it, the fish philosophy came from the folks who um, uh, work at the Pike Place Fish Market in Seattle, Washington. They are fishmongers. They probably have one of the worst jobs in the entire world. It's stinky, it's gross, they play with fish all day. Um, and they were getting stuck in a rut. And so they made a decision to make their work fun and choose their attitude in order to approach what they do um, to make them not feel like they were in survival mode all the time. So choosing your own attitude is huge. You always have a choice about the way you approach life, your plate, everything, even if there is not a choice about what life puts on your plate. So think about that. Sometimes we have things on our plate we don't have a choice about. So I, but I can still choose to approach my, my plate with an attitude that goes, okay, it's another day. I can choose to do this or I can choose to be miserable about it. I could choose to go get in my bath, bathtub with Calgon, but then nobody's going to do what it is and it's still going to be there tomorrow. So some things you may not be able to take off your plate right away, right? How can we better manage what's on our plate? Um, so think about how did your day start today? Were you up and pumped and ready to attend this conference and all the sessions that you're going to get to hear today? Um, or did you say, I'm signed up for this conference and I'm going to listen to these sessions, but they're probably not going to tell me anything I don't already know. We do that a lot. And so we need to approach that. Maybe it is a topic that I already know a lot about. Um, and I tell this to my college students all the time. Yes, you probably have some great life experiences from um, some of these things, but there might be one little tiny seed of something that you didn't know that you can take and run with today. There's always room to learn something new. And I find that if you look for it, you will find something new. What state of mind did you choose? I'm going to listen to all these sessions and I'm going to absorb everything I can, um, which sometimes will kind of mess with my attitude because then I get a little um, hyper about keeping up with it all, but um, that's my problem. So, um, but you know, do you have a notepad next to you? Do you have a way to take notes? Are you making a plan in your head that I need to go back and I need to re-listen to that session? Um, or I've got these handouts from this session and I really want to choose uh, to do something with those. So what kind of state of mind did you have? And then what are you going to choose tomorrow and the next day and the day after that? Remember, wake up, put your feet on the ground and say, this is going to be a good day. Um, if you have never watched Rita uh, Pearson's, I started to say Rita Wilson, that's Tom Hanks' wife, Rita Pearson's TED Talk um, on uh, Every Kid Needs a Champion, you need to, to listen to that because I'm actually creating uh, little things, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, for my kids' desks, and it is a quote from her um, TED Talk that says, I am somebody, I was somebody when I came and I'll be a better somebody when I leave. I am powerful and I am strong. I want my kids to see this every morning when they come into school and they sit down at their desks. And I, I'm gonna have them read it. It's kind of gonna be kind of like our class motto because I want them to know. Um, last year I dealt with a lot of, but Ms. McKay, you know I'm not gonna be able to do it. Ms. McKay, you know I'm not smart. And so I wanna turn that around this year and I want to start off on the right foot. So I want my children and me to get up every morning and choose my smiley, happy attitude. Does that mean that there's not gonna be bad things that happen during the day? Absolutely not. It means that I need to choose to find a way to overcome all of that and still maintain my attitude. So, um, again, in person, I would have this big bowl um, and some of those things on your plate that you might already be able to cross off or maybe aren't even uh, a part of a priority of yours, 
why can't we put some of those things into this fishbowl to die? As you can see, there's a dead fish at the bottom because that's usually what happens to me when I get fish. Um, I tried to have fish all year last year and every one of them kept dying. Um, so, but the kids were very um, in the fish's face a lot. So putting your problems in the fishbowl, what can you go ahead and take off your plate now that is not needed, that is not necessary, that doesn't mean that it can't come back on your plate at another point in time, but what can you take off and put into the fishbowl for right now? Will you let some of that stuff on your plate, and remember this is all about how we play the game, eat away at you until it has robbed you of all of your joy? No, we wanna make the best of every moment that we have, even the bad moments. Then we need to have a map that guides us where we are going because look at us, we are on this trail that is not straight and it's not even and it's not without its bumps or mountains as it were. And so we have to think about, you know, how are we going to guide ourselves there? And again, we need to create our own map. We need to look at our goals and we need to say, okay, here's where I'm going. Get them supervision goggles out and say, that's where I'm going. And here's what's going to happen to me along the way and kind of predict what's going to, you know, come across your path. Um, I love this quote. Um, it is an unknown quote. Before you start to judge me, and think about this with yourself, okay? Step into my shoes and walk the life I'm living. And if you get as far as I am, just maybe you will see how strong I really am. And so that kind of goes with the quote I shared with you from Rita Pearson. Um, don't judge yourself too harshly. Remember to go back, and, and I teach reflection all the time, reflect on the walk you've already walked and look how far you are and be, you know, very cognizant of, hey, I made it here. Um, think of the games, board games we play, strategy, um, monopoly and all of those things. We can dwell on where we're stuck if we're stuck in those first, you know, bad properties or what have you, but we can also use the map and make some, some uh, judgment decisions, you know, part of it's the roll of the dice, I get that. But look at where I'm going, but look at how strong I am to be where I am right now. Um, I may be on, what is it, Baltic Avenue, one of the first ones, um, but I have $3,000 in, in cash or whatever it is. Um, think about how you, where you are, how strong you are currently, um, and then look at your map and go, I can keep going. If I was on top of that mountain right now with this lady right here, I would be like going, yep, no, I'm done. Um, but except for I'm stuck at the top of the mountain, right? So we can't be done. We have to keep moving forward. We can find a better path, um, maybe a clearer path or what have you, but there's always going to be obstacles on that path. And so I love, these are two of my favorite cartoons. I'm not exactly sure why they come up backwards, but that's okay. Um, the first one is, is while we're on that path, she's on the top of the mountain, right? So we, we all know that there's a guru at the top of the mountain that we can ask information of. And so we climb up the mountain, we ask the guru, and he says, really, it's all about the hokey pokey. Um, you know, and it's, it's kind of like that, you guys, you get to the top of the mountain and it's like, really? This is it, you know, but um, then you might get the guru on the right who says there's been a change in the universe and it's really not about the hokey pokey anymore. So there's nothing solid, you guys, um, but guess what? Stop whatever it is you're doing and do the hokey pokey because that creates joy. It creates laughter. If you're with the kids, do it with the kids. If you're with your coworkers, do it with your coworkers. Do it um, by yourself. I mean, the point is, is getting ourselves back on track. The guru's not always right. Okay, so we can't rely on that. Our map needs to be our map where we are going because we have done the outwit part and we have given ourselves a vision to work towards. And then perceptions. Um, I Again, I love this picture. 
Um, because what, what do you see when you look in the mirror? What, um, you know, what do you expect to see when you look in the mirror? Who do you, who are you? Do you know who you are? I ask this question a lot in reflection practices of, you know, who are you um, as yourself? Like, who are you as a human being on the planet? And then who are you in relationship to your work with children? And sometimes that's two totally different people. Are you a different uh, person, you know, out of school? And, and to, a, to an extent we are, um, then you are in school. And which one are you more confident being? Are you more confident being yourself or are you more confident being yourself in your role as a teacher? So we have to really look at um, who we are. And in order to outplay, we need to know ourselves as, as a player, right? Um, so when we look at this, we need to take, and this is small group time, but really we're just going to kind of talk about this. Um, if, you were, if we were in person, I would have you do this exercise. Ralph Waldo Emerson, quote, what you are, what you are speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. So it's not what you say, it's not what people hear from you, it's what they see. It's their perception of you. So you may think that you are here, but really somebody else sees you as being over here. And I know you can't really see my hands very well, but um, so we have to understand how other people see us. If you watch Survivor, which I'm not even a Survivor fan, but I like the theme, um, but that's what they do. They look at, um, they, they will say things like, well, if I, they'll expect me to do this because that's who they think I am. And so it's part of their strategy to try to throw off the other people, right? Um, so do you think you, you are an optimistic person? I think I'm a pretty optimistic person. Do you think you're helpful? Do you think you're caring? Supportive? Self-confident? Accepting? These are all great qualities, right? Are you fair? We all like to think we're fair, right? Great qualities. I would want to have all of these. And I try to embrace all of these as great qualities. So if somebody were to ask me, give me some qualities that you would use to describe yourself, I would use most of these. All of them, probably. But who am I really to other people? Because remember what I am or what I present speaks louder than what I say. Okay, so I can tell you all day that I'm optimistic. But at the same time, others might see me as impractical. Oh, she's a dreamer. She's, she doesn't even have her feet on the ground. That's just, that just, it's not reality. I'm helpful. She spends so much time helping other people that she doesn't take care of herself or doesn't even do her own job. See how this works? Caring. Oh, she cares too much. She won't stop smothering. Ask my children. Um, I smother. Um, but that's how people can perceive the fact that I'm caring. Um, I really empathize with you. Um, and people are like, back off. I don't, I don't need that much. Okay. I'm supportive. I'm submissive. I'm just doing what people ask me to do. Um, she's only doing that because we asked her to. Self-confident, arrogant. I am very self-confident and a lot of people will think that I am arrogant. I try very hard not to be, but I will toot my own horn. Um, a friend of mine used to say, if you don't toot your own horn, somebody's gonna use it as a spittoon. And if you don't know what a spittoon is, that's what people used to spit their tobacco in. Um, and so, Basically, you know, it's important for us to toot our own horn, but we need to regulate how that happens because perceptions can be deceiving. I'm accepting. That means I'm passive. It means I don't care. I, you know, passive aggressive people, um, you know, that kind of thing. Am I fair? I'm unfeeling. 
that means I don't care about one side or the other. So if I, if I say, well, it's fair if we do it this way, somebody's going to be, well, she doesn't care about my side. That's perceptions. Okay. Uh, then we need to have, of course, once we understand and perceive ourselves and understand how we can perceive others, we need a megaphone for good communication, right? Um, it is very, very important to know exactly what it is that you want to have communicate, what you want to communicate. It is very important to communicate in other people's languages. So we know, you know, how we talk and what we say. I find this all the time. I, I ask my husband all the time. I speak English, right? Because sometimes I say things and people don't understand what I'm talking about. And I think it's very simple and very basic, but they don't. So I have to remember that I need to speak in other people's languages. And I'm not talking about foreign languages. I'm talking about in their ways that they understand things. Some people need to have less words, more actions, those kind of things. Um, avoid interjecting your own personal opinion when talking about people and things. So um, making sure that you are keeping your personal opinions out. Ask questions directly related. Um, make sure you're checking your tone. How we say things rather than what we say determines interpretation. Match your nonverbal messages to your verbal ones and always be sincere and be an active listener. And ask for clarification. What I heard you say is, is that right? And that way, you know, you're going to avoid a lot of things. Planning, 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 and then planning. Your next kid item is to plan. Um, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because we know and everybody plans in a different way. The important thing is, is that you plan. Uh, Margaret Thatcher says, plan for your work uh, for today and every day, then work your plan. And you've probably heard this a lot. If you don't plan it, it's not going to happen. So if it's a to-do list, if it's your planner, if it's a combination of everything, plan. Get yourself organized and make sure you make a plan. So now we are going to outlast, okay? Our torch is still going, yay. Um, so we're going to move from a survivor to a thriver. We are going to look at persistence because you can't stay in the game if you don't have persistence. Um, humor. Humor is important. Patience, absolutely um, important. Admitting to and fixing our errors and building our own confidence. Becoming a true leader. Um, and a thriver. So what's next in our kit? Our sense of humor. Um, it is so important. Um, and that's why I said, go ahead and do the hokey pokey. Um, it, you know, I love this cartoon. I accidentally listened to my motivation tapes backwards and became a failure. So please help me. So, um, it, you know, you have to look at life um, with a sense of humor. You have to look at everything, even those things that drive you crazy, those bumps in the road. Don't worry, be happy, sing and dance, do the hokey pokey. Um, you won't regret it, I promise you. Um, laugh, laugh, and then laugh some more. Laugh at yourself, laugh at the situation. Um, I got very tickled. I tell people a story all the time about, I love going to the ocean. Um, one day we made the very silly mistake of going to the ocean on the Atlantic side, which is already pretty rough because um, I live in Florida and um, it was high tide. And so I love to go out and jump the waves. So I'm like, hey, let's go out and jump the waves. Well, I got knocked down and I couldn't get back up. I mean, like literally the waves just kept pounding and pounding and pounding. And my husband was trying to get me up and my daughter was trying to get me up. And every time they tried to get me up, a wave would come and I would fall down again. And that would drive some people crazy and make panic or whatever. But I just started laughing hysterically because people were watching. And I was like, this is crazy because this is how I'm going to die. I'm never going to be able to get up out of the ocean because the waves keep coming and they are going to keep coming. But instead of panicking, instead of looking at my circumstances and feeling sorry for myself, I just laughed. I mean, I just laughed. And so I laughed and I crawled and 
I have my daughter on one side, my husband on the other side. And, you know, it's just a very funny story of, you know, what happened to me. And I took some bad circumstances and I just laughed about it. So it's still a pretty funny uh, story. I had bruises on my knees from the sand. It was awful. So then we also need the lifesavers of persistence, right? So every once in a while, we're going to need a lifesaver. Um, learn how to say no. And remember, always remember, I'm also a Scarlett O'Hara fan, tomorrow is another day. So you have a chance to start over every day when my third graders go home. Um, you know, if they had a bad day, I'll say, you know what, tomorrow's another day. We're going to start all over again and see what happens. Um, praise yourself for all the jobs that you've done well. Toot your own horn. Focus on your goals. Just keep persisting. Keep moving forward. Don't let yourself get down and get knocked over by the waves. Surround yourself with people who know what you are going through and have the same goals with, that you do. That's that, you know, your tribe. People talk about having a tribe. I have a work tribe, right? My third grade team we are a tribe. And so if something happens, we've got each other's back. Surround yourself with people who know what you're going through and have the same goals. Understand that your education and this particular piece of it is a lifelong process. So we want to stay in thriver mode. We don't want our torch to be burned out. So make sure that we understand that it is a lifelong process. Looks like my internet's going crazy again. Um, start every day as a winner. It won't always be whatever it is that you want to put in the blank here. Um, think about Dorothy and her ruby slippers. Tough times never last, but tough people do. So she finally made it home, right? It's all good. With every adversity lies a slumbering possibility. And then kit item number 11 is the rope of patience. Patience is a virtue. People say we have to have patience all the time. If you are losing a tug of war with a tiger, give him the rope before he gets to your arm. Why? Because you can always get a new rope, right? So if you are in one of those situations and you are pulling and you are pulling and you are pulling, let it go. Uh, not to sound like Elsa, but let it go. Um, because you can always get a new rope. You can always get something else. And then of course, um, erasers. And I didn't realize when I put this eraser up here that it said Alzheimer's, so I, I don't like this. Um, I'm so sorry, I wanna apologize for that. Um, it is very true, Alzheimer's erases your memories, um, but uh, that was not my intent to put that picture there. Remember that the perfect administrator, leader, director, fill in the blank, whatever it is that you, are hasn't been born yet. Okay, that means they don't exist, just like time management. Failure is a momentary setback. It's something to learn from. So when you do something wrong, pull yourself up and get up before the next wave comes um, and learn. Learn what, to, what, what can I do in the future to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And always, always try again. So persistence, and taking those errors and using them as um, a, a, a diving board into the next thing. All right, stars of confidence. If we are not confident in what we are doing, um, we're not gonna be successful at it, okay? We're not going to be able to outwit, outplay, or outlast. We have to be confident in what we're doing. Uh, confidence comes naturally with success, but success comes only to those who are confident. And then every survivor episode, oops, sorry. Every survivor episode has um, an opportunity for immunity. Sometimes we get put in a place where we just kind of feel stuck or like maybe nothing's going to happen. So take that as an opportunity to just bloom where you're planted. Um, you know, sometimes we may have to take a stop in the road or we get stuck in a crack. Bloom, bloom wherever you are. And then I 
lastly want to share this is that you, each and every single one of you, me, everybody in our field, we make a difference every day. If you are not familiar with the star story of the, of the starfish, um, you know, the, boy, the man is throwing them back in the ocean to save them. And the guy says, there's so many of them, you'll never be able to do it. So what's the difference? And the, the person says, I made a difference for that one. You do this each and every day for every child that you reach, teach, meet, um, talk to, sing to, dance with every day. Keep reaching for those stars. Keep throwing them back because you made a difference for them. And that is all I have for you. I know it's a really quick one, but hopefully you can go back and, and watch it again. <laughs>